What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and today I wanted to talk a little bit about offensive attack formations or in other words, how to convert your breakout into an effective offensive attack uh, setup. So let's go ahead and uh, pull up the rink. You'll remember in, uh, in a few of our other videos I always talk about how well-developed systems, well-designed systems will usually lead you from one objective into the next. So your defense's own coverage should put you in proper position so that when the turnover occurs and you get the puck back, you're in good position to then break out. And then a properly structured breakout should put you in good position to attack the offensive zone um, under control with proper front side and back side support. Um, so if you need to review a few of our other videos, make sure you check out the timing and support video. We do talk a little bit about uh, you know, front side and back side support, and that will play a, a huge role in our offensive attack. Um, so here we've got... A, a basic regroup. So this is, we were in defensive zone coverage, now we got the puck back, and uh, if you've watched our breakout videos, you'll notice that uh, this is a D to D to board side breakout, um, or in other words, a blue to green if you're using the color code system. Um, so this is blue to green, we've had a one, little one touch pass, the centerman swinging through, and then as you can see, the centerman has uh, take a couple strides with the puck, and now he's hit our right winger. You'll notice the pattern that our right winger has skated here. Um, at first he starts as if he's going to become the sag man, just in case there is a turnover, um, you know, somewhere between that blue to green or, or wherever. If, if, if we do lose the puck while we're trying to break out, um, he's not already, you know, flying out of the zone. He's, he's down in a defensive position. So, first so that uh, you know he can be the sag man if the puck does get turned over and then as he sees that the breakout is progressing he then explodes up the ice and becomes the breakaway man. So that's our basic breakout setup. So you can see we've uh, we've converted our D zone coverage into our breakout and uh, now let's talk about what we're going to do from here. Um, so when we're talking defensive zone coverage and defensive breakouts and stuff I like to have really structured positions so that there's no confusion on whose responsibility uh, or, or what responsibility each player has. Um, as we move into the neutral zone and offensive zone, um, I like to let concepts govern the play there. So the concepts being, you know, timing, support, um, attacking using a, a triangle, which I'm going to show you right now, um, all that stuff. Positions aren't, aren't as relevant uh, as long as we have, you know, uh, F1, F2, and F3. So instead of designating right winger, left winger, centerman, we're going to have F1, F2, and F3. So F1, uh, if you're not familiar with this terminology, F1 is the first attacker into the zone with the puck. So in this uh, given breakout, this specific uh, particular situation, um, our right winger is our F1. So let's go ahead and label him F1. Okay. Now what F1's job is to do is, uh, and, and I usually like to give kind of a basic framework for the players to work with and then uh, and then I tell them to be creative within that framework. So what I like to say that F1 generally does is drives wide. So he'll get the puck here, he realizes he's F1, he's going to drive wide. Now the reason why I like him to drive wide, and I'm not, I'm not talking like semi-wide, I'm talking like right, really wide, okay? And the reason why I say that is because you've got, generally you've got two defensemen, right? If the other team has read the play properly and, and realizes that you're breaking out against them, um, you'll have two defensemen. Now, as F1 drives wide with speed, what is that going to force this defenseman to do? It's going to force him to make a decision. Okay, And we love to put defensemen in that position where they're forced to make a decision. But what's the decision here? Uh, the decision is either I pivot and go with this guy, okay, or I let him go. right? And, and if he lets you go, that's great. You love that. You just take it wide, drive, cut right to the net, and get a shot on net. But most likely what he's going to do is it's, he's going to pivot and go with you. So right now, just, just within the act of taking it wide with speed, um, you've now pulled the defenseman wide. Sorry, he'll probably take more of this type of an angle. Wide and um, away from the middle. So, or sorry, wide and deep. So you've just taken and driven that defenseman wide and deep. Uh, now, what we like to do is have F2, which in this case you can see the next forward up the ice is going to be our centerman here. So let's go ahead and label him F2. Okay, F2 is the second man up the ice, and he's going to do the exact same thing except on the other side. So um, I know this looks like a long way to go and a lot of ground to make up. It's not. Uh, it doesn't end up being like quite as extreme when you're actually in the game situation on the ice. So what F2 is going to do is after he makes that pass, he's going to explode, um, follow up his pass. Okay, um, which you can notice. What's that right there? 
he gives the pass, then follows his pass. It looks a little bit like a three-man weave. Uh, you, you, I'm sure you're familiar with that drill. Um, what's that providing right there? Just that act of following his pass. That's backside support. So the really good hockey teams, and watch this in the NHL, or if you've got a you know a local team that's that's really talented and understands support concepts. Um, a lot of times you'll see, and if the puck gets knocked off their stick in the neutral zone, all of a sudden it goes straight onto the stick of another one of their players. And you're sitting there going, how come they never lose a puck? Well, it's because most of the time, if, if, if that's the case, most of the time they have really good um, support through the neutral zone. So that is a support concept within it, in, in and of itself, but at the same time you're also getting ready to drive wide and cut to that far side post. Okay, so you're supporting and driving wide. You're killing two birds with one stone in that case. Uh, so if the F1 does happen to get the puck bounced off, you're in good support position there. And then you're driving wide to the net. Now, uh, we just mentioned it, we'll mention it again. Driving wide, the act of driving wide and getting to that net, what's that gonna do to this defenseman? It's gonna do the exact same thing. It's gonna force him to make a decision. So the decision is what? Do I stay with him or do I let him go? Okay, well, um, if he lets you go, then that's fantastic. You've just turned uh, you know, a two-on-two -two into a two-on-one, and uh, it should be no problem to slide a pass across with a one-time shot on net. That's great, but most likely, what's he going to do? He's going to go with you, okay? So now you've taken a two-on-two, -two, you've driven both defensemen deeper into the zone, and you've taken both defensemen wide out of the middle of the zone, and what does that leave us? That leaves us some, some room in the middle of the ice. So that's where our support men are... Uh, F3 comes in, and F3 in this situation is going to be our left winger. Now remember I always used to say, uh, or I've always said in the other videos, um, after, the, after the winger gives that little one-touch pass, what's he going to do? Swing in behind the centerman for a little bit of support there. What does that do? If the centerman gets the puck knocked off his stick, we've got a backside support man. Uh, it's the same concept as what we did right here, except that you're doing it further deep into the zone. Um, and then after you see that the breakout is made, then what are you gonna do? You're gonna follow up and become F3 on the inside shoulder of the puck carrier. Now I like to designate that, that F3 follows up behind the, behind the puck carrier, not to the middle of the ice. We don't want him over here. We don't want this to have to be a, a pass where you have to look, find the guy, and then actually make a pass. We wanna open up the option for a little drop pass. And a drop pass, you don't need to look, you just know that your player's there. So uh, drop pass, that, that player will need to be on his inside shoulder um, about probably half a line behind the puck carrier. Okay, So that gives us front si a front side option, front side support in the zone, and back side support, back side option. And you can see that we are attacking the zone under control using an attack triangle. And let's just draw that up real quick. Boom. So there's our attack triangle. Uh, a very, that's a very, very strong offensive attack um, setup. And one of the re reasons I really like this is that um, it leads into a whole bunch of different options within that framework. And uh, we'll talk about all those options in another video. But that's the basic how your breakout will convert into your offensive attack, having plenty of backside support, uh, backside and frontside support through the neutral zone, and attacking the offensive zone using the attack triangle.